Hey guys, Colin Rojas here with Rojas Woodworking. Today we're going to be going over part two of the vacuum DIY series. In part one, I went over the process of designing a vacuum table in VCarve Pro. If you did not see that one, I definitely encourage you to go on back and take a look at it. It's got a lot of good information. In this video, however, we're going to be going over the material that you will need for your vacuum table, as in the material that you will carve your vacuum grid into, as well as the first two tool paths that you will use to get your material fastened down to the, uh, to the bed of your CNC. So when it comes to choosing the material for your vacuum table, you wanna go with something like phenolic or HDPE. These two materials though are very expensive. They are the least porous um, so they will give you the best vacuum seal, but you are going to pay a decent amount. I believe for the sheet that I got, it was around eight or $900 for a uh, five foot by 10 foot sheet. Another option is MDF. I personally would not recommend this because it is such a porous material. However, making sure that you seal it very well can help prevent future vacuum leaks. I just personally do not recommend it because the main objective in building a vacuum table is to achieve a perfect vacuum seal. When you're using a material that is very porous, it will create a lot of unwanted vacuum leaks. Um, so anyways, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know there's generally three different kinds of materials. Um, two of them I definitely recommend. The other one will get you by for a little while, uh, but long term you might end up having some problems. With that being said, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this video where we talk about the two uh, tool paths that you will run initially. So tool path number one is going to be the pocketing tool path for the hexagon shape of the 5 16 bolt. And that will be countersunk a half inch or sorry, not a half inch, halfway through whatever material that you decide to use for your vacuum table. Keep in mind, if you have a Bob CNC, your first layer is your baseboard, which for mine is a half inch sheet of plywood. That material is fastened to the frame of the CNC, and then the HDPE or phenolic or um, uh, MDF, if, whichever material you decide to go with, uh, that will uh, be on top of your baseboard. So tool path number one will put a pocket or bore a hole in a hexagonal shape halfway through your material. And tool path number two is going to drill out the hole so that your bolt can go through not only the uh, vacuum grid material, but your baseboard as well. And then you will use a 5 16 washer. It's got a pack of them there, as well as 5 16 lock nuts. This is very important that you pick lock nuts because the machine does create a lot of vibrations and you're likely to vibrate these loose. Um, if you don't go with lock nuts, I would recommend Loctite for sure. Um, so yeah, with that being said, it is very important that you do these two tool paths first because uh, whatever material that you decide to use for your vacuum grid, if you carve the vacuum grid into it without it bolted down, it will want to twist and cup on you. So it is very important that the first two tool paths that you do are the pocketing tool path for your bolt and the actual hole for your bolt so that you can get the, get the material bolted down to your table. So now with that being said, let's go out to the shop and take a look at it in action.